move on one more step. So now, um, remember that earlier on, we were actually showing that we, we specifically indicated, our, or actually when we we're creating this one initially, we specify that we want specific index, right? We specify it over here, right? So what if you load your data set, right? We're going to learn how to load the data set. So later on, you'll see how to load the various data sets. Now, what if you load your data set, right? And then you see some column that you want to make that column an index. How can you do that? Or you want to change um, the index and then just reset it. How do you do that, right? So now let's see how we can actually do that, okay? So if I do this, right, my my dat my underscore data frame dot index. So these are the index that I have, right? I have row one all the way to row ten. That is the index that I have, right? So that's row one all the way to row ten. That's the index that I have. So if I use my underscore data frame dot index, that's that's it's actually going to give me that. Okay. Now I'm going to create another column. Remember that I told you how to I showed you how to create a column, right? I showed you how to create a column. Now I'm going to create a column named as spin, right? Remember that over here, I created a column um, named as column six, then I provided the input as um, two multiplied by this. So over here, I'm also going to create another column called spin and the input that I want, I'm specifying the input over here, right? That these are, these are supposed to be the input, SP, SP1, SP3, all the way to SP10. These are the inputs that I want to, to actually show over there. So if I do that, right, if I run that, then I come here and then I show you what I have in here. Now you see that I have another column, right? I have another column called a spin and I have SP1, SP3, SP4. So these are what, what, what I have, right? These are the inputs that I wanted to input over here, right? And that's what I have put here. Now what I can do is that, let's say I want this column to be the index. Right, I want this column to, I could have used any of these columns. I could have used column six to, to be the index, right? I just I just created another column and then I'm going to use that, okay? So what I can do is that with my underscore data frame, I use another function called set, uh, set index, right? So, so set underscore index, right? Set underscore index here is actually going to set um and the index and then we specify which in, which, I mean, which, which, which column we, do we want to use as the index right so i want the spin column right uh, the spin column here to be the index so i specify here and then i use the in place equals true to say to show that um whatever changes that i'm doing here right now i'm going to change this index so i want whatever changes that i'm doing here to reflect in the original data set okay so if i do that right if i do that and i run this again right um let me actually run this first let me run this Okay, now if I run this, now you can see that I have the spin here, right? Earlier on, spin was here, right? I was having spin here, I was having this as index. Now I have reset the index, right? By using the set underscore index to do that, okay? Now I have the spin column to be my index, right? I have the spin column and the values that I have there to be my index. Okay, so that's, that's another way that you can actually um, do to create the index. Now over here, let's say I want to actually change the column name. So I have column one, column two. So you load your data set, right? The use of this, you are going to actually see each of these things that I'm showing here. You are going to encounter them later on when you're doing your projects, right? When you're in the real world, when you get employed, uh, you, when you are, even if you're working already, right? You, you, you encounter this situation over and over again, okay? If you load your data set, some of the column names that might come, you might not want it. So what can you do? Let me let me even show you an example over here, right? Let me show you an example over here. Okay. Now if you see this, right, when I loaded the data first, right, I was having this name, this column names, and all income, then in bracket I have K dollars, right? And then um spending score, spending score, I was having one to um hundred over here. I don't want it, the name to be this way. So in order for me to be able to change the name to just annual income and spending score so that I'll be able to work with, you see that over here, I renamed the column, right? So uh, anything that I'm showing you are going to need it. And that's why I have found pick these essential things to, to show you step by step. So that as you encounter them, you will not actually um, fumble, you will know what to do, okay? So I've showed you how you can set the index using the uh, set underscore index. So I'm going to show you how you can change the column names. If you want to change the column names too, you can do that. So 
with my underscore data frame, I'm using the function called rename to do that, right? So what I'm showing you, I mean, with 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 set index and rename, I mean, it's not just I mean a, a golden rule. It's not just a strict rule that you're supposed to follow this only, right? There are other ways that you can do it. I'm just showing you the easier way to do that. Okay, so my data, I mean, my underscore data frame dot rename is here. I mean, that's the function, right? My underscore dot rename is so everything that i'm using here is a function right it's a function and then inside the function you pass you pass something in there right it's the same thing over here so inside this rename function what i'm going to do is that i'm going to show you the columns right i'm going to select the columns right and i'm going to create it in the form of a dictionary that's why earlier on i showed you how to create a dictionary in the num right from the numpy class okay so that actually when we are in subsequent um, tutorials like this one and the ones that will come before, after this, you actually you actually be familiar with when we are creating um, a dictionary. So over here, what I'm doing is that I'm actually creating a dictionary. So column, I have my column one. Now I'm going to rename my column one as, as first, right? So that's what the rename function is actually going to help me to do. So if you go in, if you see any column one, rename it at first. If you see, if you see column two, rename it to second, right? If you see column three, rename it to third. If you see column five, rename it to fourth. If you see column six, rename it to sixth, right? So in this case, I'll have first, second, third, fourth, and then um, sixth, right? Maybe I should do it first, second, third, um, fourth, and then fifth, right? So that. Right, so that um, it will be consistent, right? Instead of column one, column two, column three, I don't have column four, right? But I have column three and then column, column five. Or from column three, I'm going to column five, column six. So the names are not consistent. I want to change that to make it consistent. So first column, second column, third column, fourth column, and then fifth column, right? That's what I want to do. And I'm using in place equals true. So I try to make sure that whatever um, changes that I'm doing here will reflect in the original data. Actually, I could have made everything on a single line. So from here, then I, I could have um, added this, right? I could have added this over here. I could have added, I'm just cutting it to put it here. Then I could have also bring this one here, right? I could have done all of them here, but it will be so long that um, I don't want to be screwing down over, over here. But if I do it this way, right, it's actually uh, more convenient to see everything, everything, right? So this, this is also another way that you can be writing your code, right? So that you avoid the long, the long line, right? And then make it, I mean, as, as readable as possible. Okay. So if I do that, right, let me actually run this. Okay. And then run this again. Now you see that instead of instead of um, column one, column two, column three, column five, and six, now I have first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So you see that I've been able to reset the data index. I've been able to change, I mean, or rename the column names too. Okay. So these are some of the things that you're going to encounter moving forward. Okay. Now so I did, I did, I re, uh, rename all these columns at once, right? I did everything at once. What if I just want to rename a specific column, just like the one that I showed you, right? Just like the one that I showed you, I just wanted to rename specific column. So I was having this column, right? I, was, I, was, I just wanted to sh rename this column, right? And then that column. So not all of them, right? So how do I do that too, right? How do I do that? Let's see how we are going to do that. So let's go all the way down here, right? Let's go all the way down here. Now I can just, instead of instead of putting everything together, right? So I can just do it for only column one and that's it, right? So I can get rid of all these, right? And then um, do it for only column one, okay? And that will work for me. I could have done that too and that will work for me. So that's what I'm doing here. So um, for column one, which is, which is um, having a label or a name as first, right? I'm going to rename this first as one. So if we see in the, in, the, in the column name as first, rename it to one, right? So if I do that, right, you see that now I have one and then the second, third, fourth, fifth, right? See that I have one over there. So you can uh, rename a single column, right? Now, what I will leave you with is that you should also um, practice along by also renaming a single index, right? So you can also do that. So try and then rename a single index, 
Okay, so just practice alone and then do that. Now, let's let's come to I mean what what I mean mostly we are going to be doing over and over again. That's reading a data set um, with pandas and then working on the data set. Okay, so let's see how we are going to be able to um, read data set and then work with data set. Okay. Now uh, I have this data set, which is automobiles um, data set, which is which is from Cargo. So if you go to this link, you can actually get that data set over there. I will also load it on the platform for you, so that things will become easier for you. Okay. Now in order to read data set, there are several several functions that you can use. Right, there are several functions. I think um from our previous classes and even um yeah from our, our previous classes, I think you have you have been seeing this read underscore CSV, right? That you can use to read your data. Okay. All right, we have been using this read underscore CSV that you can actually use to read your data. And after working on your data, if you want to actually store it in a CSV format, you can actually use this to underscore csv to also do that okay and there are several other functions that you can use uh, several other readers that you can use so let's say your data is actually on a on a i mean it's stored on a j i mean uh on a HL, H, html format right in that case you are actually going to use um let me actually do this so that we can have a better view of this Okay, so um, let's say your your data. If your data is a comma separated value in a comma separated format, right? That's the CSV. Then you use read underscore CSV to read it. If it's in a JSON format, right? You use read underscore JSON. If it's an HTML format, you use read underscore HTML. So all the way, right? If it's SL format, you use uh, read underscore SL. So there are different different functions that or readers that you can actually use to read your data. And we are going to be encountering them over and over again as we progress in this course all right so this one is to just give you an intuition that there are all these readers available that you can actually um, be using right you can actually be using as we progress in this course so as we, as we encounter a particular data set we will actually determine which um which 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 actually i mean which reader we are supposed to read i mean used to read that right so if for instance if we come our data set is containing anything point xl um sx right something like that then we we need to use um the sl to read that okay so there are several several data sets that we're going to encounter that we we need different readers over here to do that okay and i've provided this for you for for your reference right so in case you encounter a data set and you are um you have forgotten you can easily refer to it okay now let's see um we're going to deal with this automobile data set okay so let me let me show you how it is right it's a csv form right so uh, i in the previous video in the in the numpy class i showed you what csv format is right so um if we do this right so let's see if we can um, load this right so now you can see what we have over here right now if you see any of these data points right if you see any of these data points if we take for instance um symboling you see that we have comma here normalized losses we have comma here make we have comma here for type we have comma here so all these data points right if we take 48.8 there's a comma separating it from the next one so each of them there's a comma separated them from um the other data points right so this is a comma separated values all these are comma separated values that's why we have csv right comma right they are all comma and then um, separated, right? They are all comma separated, right? And then the V for values, right? So that's a CSV value format for you, right? So the all the data points have been separated by commas, right? So these values have been separated by commas. So they are all um, comma separated values, okay? And that's why we will need read underscore CSV to read it right as i showed you over here if it is in the csv format right that's comma separated format then you use read underscore csv to actually read that all right so let me um comment this one out so that we will have space to work because it's a huge data set and um we will need a space over here okay and now over here you can see that i'm using um read underscore csv to read that right and this is i mean present in pandas all right remember that we loaded pandas we shortened it to pd now i'm using pd dot uh, read underscore csv if i had not shortened 
pandas to pd then over here i i should have um, written it this way pandas dot read underscore csv right so this function this read underscore csv is present in pandas okay it's present in pandas so i don't want to be typing pandas over and over again that's why i just shortened it to pd okay so that will be using pd dot read underscore csv then i'll show i'll locate which data that i'm reading right which is automobile dot csv right it's a csv format so i'm doing that so i load everything i will load everything here then i'll store it in my variable called data okay i'll load everything right i'll load everything then i'll store it in my variable called data okay so if i run that now everything is run and uh, my data is stored in in this this data for me now what i can do is to actually see the first five rows right the first five rows so if you use the head function if you use the head function what you are um, telling um pandas is that show me the first five rows that is present in the data that i have loaded so if i do that you see what i have over here so this is the same comma separated values that you were seeing right we were seeing symbol in normalized laws so this one powerful thing about pandas it helps us to read the data that is in that raw format in the form of it in a tabular form i see that now we have headings we have rows we have some index over here right and it's actually putting everything in a table form for us just like you have your excel sheets right just like you have your excel sheet now in this data that we've we've been able to load it this is in on automobile data set right so all this data is about automobile right it's about automobile here you have symbol you have normalized laws you have the make which is the type of the car right we have the type of the fuel which is the fuel type right so all these things that we have here and then uh, we also have the price right the price of each of the car has also been collected over here the horsepower right so everything that we have here it's actually um a, a data point which is describing this automobile okay which is describing this automobile so this one is actually printing the first five row one two three four five right for us okay you can actually specify if maybe you want to print the first 15 right that's what's actually going to give you, you see that now we have the first 15 remember that i start from zero so obviously it's going to end at um 14 right so you can see that we have 15 rows right we have 16 rows and then we have 26 different columns right we have 26 different columns That's from counting from here one two three all the way to um all the way to prices we have 26 right remember that it will break here because it cannot show all the 26 so it will break somewhere in the middle here for us okay so that it will be able to show the last um column that we have over here okay so now let's let's um, move on and then see what we can do. Now we watched or uh, we view um, we, we viewed the first five rows or the first fifteen rows, right? Using the head function, right? If we want to use the last the last um, five rows, right? We can use the tail function to do that, right? We can use the tail function. So if we run that, you see that what we have here. Which is the last so we have 200 here you see that we have 196 197 198 right and then um 199 and 200 so all these are this is the last five rows that we have okay this is the last five rows that we have using the tail function you can actually do that now let's say you want to actually select a particular column right just like we're dealing with when we're doing this right so when we we wanted to just select um column two we we did so over here too we can do the same thing right if we want to select um, a particular column let's say the make that is the type of the car we can actually use that so data in data we want to select the make right so we go into data right just like um just like i showed you earlier on right um, let me bring my pen so that i can actually show you what i mean so we go into this data right we go into this data then inside the data we pick the column make right so we go into data right then inside the data we are going to pick um the column named as make right we're going to pick that column okay so that's what i'm actually doing over here right we go into data and then in data we're going to pick the column so this will help us to display everything that is present in make right it will help us to print everything that is present in make so you can see that we have all the car types right remember that it will break somewhere here right because we have 20 different rows 
right and we cannot print all the i mean we have 200 different rows and we cannot print all the 200 um different rows over here right so this is actually going to um print the first the first five and then the last five for us to see and then it will break in the middle there all right and that uh, maybe we want to select all the columns right over there and then see which columns that we have over here see that if we use the dot columns we are able to see or select all the columns right so we have simply normalized losses make for a type right all the way to prices right all the way to price we have symbol in normalized losses make for a type aspiration all the way to prices right so if we use the dot column right the dot columns here we go we are able to remember it's dot columns not just dot column right so take note of that so data dot columns right we're able to select all the columns okay we can do the same thing for the index right we use the dot index we can able to do the same thing remember that the index starts from zero all the way to 200 so what is going to do is that it's going to show you where it starts from and where it ends right where it ends so in this particular case it ends at 201 right and the distance i mean or the difference between the i mean the the index is actually one right that is from zero to one is one from one to two is one from two to three is one from three to four all the way from 196 to 197 the distance is one so it takes one step right it takes one step from from one index to the other right that's what is actually showing here okay so with index with columns you can select the index and then the columns now one important thing that you're going to actually need over and over again is to use this is now or is na right so you can use is now or is na so we are actually going to encounter both of them as, as we progress right so here i'm using is now right so you can also use is um is na all of them will work perfectly for you okay so what the, what what was the meaning of this is and it's now right now if um if if they are collecting the data whatever your source will be right it's possible that some data points were not present right some data points were not present in that case that um data that was not present python recognized it as n a n right that is not right that is not i mean not sorry for that that is not a number right that's not a number so python recognized that as n a n right that's null value right there's nothing there is null right it's null that's why we're using this is now right is there any now there right so we're using is now okay you can also use is n a right is there any um n a not a value there right so you can also use that so that's what um pandas actually recognize now values okay if we do that right we are going to get um true or false right that's boolean if you remember the data types we talked about when we when we we're dealing with this um in the first videos we talked about a boolean right python data types we talked about what is called a boolean that is true or false so if it will go through each of these right it will check we are using the data right so to check all the data points that are present in data right when we loaded our data initially we stored everything here in data so it will check all these data points and then see if there are some data points which are not available then it will uh, say that yes there's uh, there's uh, some there are some data points which are not available if the data point is available it will say false right because we are saying that is it an a or is it now no it is not now so it will be false is the data point here now no it is not now so it will be false remember that if you see here right we have three we have three so it is not now there's a data point there there's three there right so if there are no data points there um there are several ways that they could have represented this now but if there are no points here um you you might probably be seeing this and a n over here right it would have been n a n right so maybe there's a little data point here you might be seeing n a n maybe here you might be seeing n a n right something like that right so if it encounters this now then it will bring true right it will it will print true but if there's something there then it will say that it's false because what is there is not is not now so it will bring you false but if it is now then it will show you that it's true it's now okay to show you that it's true is now 
So that's that's what it's actually doing over here. But it's um, sometimes difficult to even spot it right if you see over here because it breaks somewhere here. So even if there are some true in there, it's quite difficult to spot, right? And even it's actually difficult to go through all these and then figure out if there were any true in there. Okay. So what can save you is this, right? Use this is now all right, right? Use this is, is now all right, which is the same thing over here. Data dot is now. What you can add is this dot sum. Okay, what you can add is this dot sum. So what is this dot sum actually going to do? It will count all the false and then sum them and then count all the true and then sum, sum them. It will do that for each of the columns, right? So if you see what we have here, it will count all the, it will go through and then see, is there any, any true there, right? So what it's actually going to put is actually the trues, right? Not the false, but the trues. So if it encounters any true, it will count it. So maybe, um, for instance, if there were some true in there, the number of trues that were present in this symbol, um, symboling column will be provided here. In this case, there were no now values in there. There were no empty values in there, right? So we have zero. We did not find any true there. The same way in the normalized losses, there were no true value there, right? There were no now values in there. All the data were present. If there were any data that was not present, then um, that's how many times it appeared, right? How many times now values or data not present appeared will be counted, right? So here, um, not in the normalized losses column, there were no um, data points that were not present, right? So, I mean, it's the same thing for all of them, but ideally, when your data comes, right, it's possible you're going to have a lot of um, null values in there to deal with, okay? And we are going to learn how to deal with um, subsequently. We're going to learn how to deal with that, okay? If you want to find the difference between that, I provided some notes over here and some links that you can actually um, take advantage of, okay? Um, I'll, I'll not use this drop NA right now, right? Because we don't have NA here, right? But if there were any NA here, that is any null values in here, right? Then we could have maybe dropped them. But don't forget, I mean, take note of it. Dropping a row or dropping a column should be the last thing that you should do, okay? There are several ways to walk your way around when um, you encounter null values, okay? And we're going to talk about it subsequently in our videos. But when you encounter now values what you actually need to take note of it is that if you drop the column or if you drop the row what happens is that you lose a significant information even if it is small you lose that information because you have dropped it so you're not actually going to get any information out of it right so what you can actually do is to work your way around that and there are several ways that you can actually do that we're going to see it um quite i mean quite soon right in this video we're going to actually see how you can deal with now values so what I'm doing here is that let me get rid of this first before I uh, bring that one back, right? So if I do that, right, what this one is actually going to give me is it's going to calculate, right? This is just this describe function. It's actually going to give me the five number summary. What is a five number summary? If you remember your box plot, right? Maybe from your from your 10th grade or from your 12th grade, right? We have um, the whiskers, right? We have the whiskers and then we have this something like this right this this how the box plot looks like right so over here we have um we have the minimum we have the maximum right and then over here this becomes our q3 right this becomes our q1 and then the middle here right we're having some middle here which is the median right which is the median okay so this is this is actually how we just median i mean it's the same thing also as the q2 all right, so this, this is the five number summary, which is one, right, two, and then three, four, and then five, right? So that's what it's actually going to give us over here. Let me push a little bit down, all right? So we see that we have, um, we have the mean, right? We have the mean here. Let me bring my pen. We have the mean, we have the standard deviation, the minimum, the 25th percentile, which is nothing but the Q1. We have um, the, 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 I mean the median, right? The median, which is nothing but the Q2, as I showed you. We have the 75th percentile, which is nothing but the Q3. And then we have the maximum over here, okay? So that is basically what this um, describe function is going to help you to, uh, to identify, okay? So you can actually draw some inferences from this, this, I mean, 
this um describe function the summary function that is to actually give you for instance um if if um let me do this right for instance if you take um let me let me transpose it as as i was having earlier on so if you use dot capital t right you can actually switch the rows and the columns remember that we have the count the mean the standard deviation here then we have the the the, the symbol the symbol in the normalized losses the wheel base we also have them here now i can bring these ones down right i can do it this way right what i'm going to actually do is to just switch them right bring this one here and then bring this one here so that's what i'm actually going to do just to switch them right switch this one here right and then switch this one here so what is here what all these things that are here are going to go here right and all these things right all these things that are here are going to go here that's what i'm going to do right so i'm going to use nothing but this this transpose um you can actually use a transpose right just use transpose you could have used the transpose function right but I, in this case i'm using the t right i'm using the t to do that okay so if i run that right now you see that i have the count the mean the standard deviation and then the 25th percentile the 50th percentile i have that over here okay so we can actually draw some inferences from this right we can draw some inferences from this for example if you take um if you take say um the price right if you take the price we can say that um let me yeah let me do it this way right let me do it this way and then bring my pen so if we take say the price right we can see that on average we have um we have a car which cost thirteen thousand, right so on average the cars that we're talking about cost around thirteen thousand two hundred and seven um dollars right so on average we can we can say that okay on average we can say that we can say that the highest no, I mean the highest price of a car is around forty-five thousand four hundred, right? The highest price of a car is around forty-five thousand four hundred. So you can do the same thing for any of these um any of these columns that you have here, right? So on average, um the horsepower of a car is around um one zero point two six or two three if you want to run it, right? On average, the horsepower of a car is this, and you can see that the maximum horsepower of a car is around two hundred and um sixty-two, right? So you can do the same thing. You can draw the same inferences from from all these, right? Don't forget that if you do this describe function, if you use the describe function, it's only going to work on the numerical columns, right? It's only going to work on the numerical columns, right? That's what is actually going to work. So, for instance, if you take um, if you take the name of the car, right? Remember that we have car, and then um, the body style that is the sedan um yeah there are, are different different cars sedan audi or right we have different different cars over there okay so those columns will not be counted or right? for instance if we take number of doors we have some cars that are having two doors some cars that are having four doors right these ones will not actually the describe function will not work on them it's only, only work on columns such as symboling which is having numbers right um wheelbase which is having numbers and first engine size which is having numbers stroke which is having numbers compare um, compression ratio right something like that all the way to the price right these these columns the numerical columns that are having numerics in there is what um is what the describe function actually going to work on okay now let's see how we can actually perform some conditional selections in here right so this is the data that we are working with right this is our data and this is the data that we are actually working with okay so let's see what we can do we've actually seen how we can select a specific column right so um not no i think this one is a bit clear to you how we can select specific columns right? okay or maybe multiple columns we can still do that okay now let's say we want to see um the maximum price right uh, we can use the describe function to see all of them at once right we can use the describe function then we can see that we have for uh, 45,400 right we can also use um the max function we can also use the max function and we'll get the same output for 45,400 right we can do that um for for each of these individual columns okay now let's say that we want to see the price of um, cars that are costing above 45,000 right now if we want to do that right we can just write it like this right so 
um, in data when we go into the data column we select the prices right i mean when we go into data data is containing everything i mean yeah data is containing everything so we we go into our data set which contains everything right then we go into the price column right then we select all the prices that are greater than forty thousand right now if i don't bring this right if i don't bring this one this data again which i'm giving uh, and I, I think i showed you something like this in the numpy class right if i do this right it's actually going to give me true or false right it's, so the cars that are having right it will actually go into this column and then see so if it, it encounters any price which is actually um, less than forty thousand remember that the condition that we are given here is that the prices that are greater than um, forty thousand is what we are interested in that is what we want to sell it but if you go into that that um that column and then it encounters any 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 price which is actually less than right it encounters any price which is actually less than forty thousand then it will say that that price is false it's not actually greater than thirty um forty thousand but if the price is actually greater than forty forty thousand then it will show true right remember that it's breaking here so we cannot see all the true or false right so in order for me to get the values not the true or false right that's why i bring this one again that's why i bring this this one data again right that's why i bring data again so if i run that now you see that i have this right i have this now i have only only the cars that are having for um prices greater than 45 right so i have 41,315 is greater than 40,000. I have 40,960, right, which is greater than 40,000. 40, I have 45,400, which is greater than, um, it is greater than 40, right? So over here, we can actually do that, right? We can actually do that to avoid the true or false, okay? Now, I can also do another condition here, which car is having the price greater than 20? okay so if we go into our data right we can actually go to the price and then see all the prices that are greater than 20 right so, and the question over here is saying that which car is actually um having the prices which is greater than 20 right so we can actually do that query we can actually perform that query so this is how we are actually going to do it what we're going to do is that um, i'm bringing this one here outside here right so that i can actually um get the get the real values right now what I'm doing is that I go into into um into my data set, then I go into the price column, right? In the price column, I'm going to select any price which is greater than twenty thousand, right? That's what my question is saying. Which car is having the price greater than twenty thousand? So I go into that column, then I select all the prices that are greater than twenty thousand. Remember that the question is saying that which car, right? So I need the car. The car is actually um, in our column make column is actually the one containing the different types of the cars right either bmw mercedes audi or i mean other other cars that we have right remember that if you go into the original data set we have different different we have some sedan in there right we have some sedan we have some um convertible hatchback oh no actually this one is body um, i'm talking about uh make right i'm talking about make so we have different different cars in there you can see audi you can see bmw right you can see alfa romero you said we have different different um different different types of cars that we can talk about in there okay so um that's what i'm doing that um i want the make right and the make column is what the make column contains the different types of cars then i want the price so i want only two columns right the make and then the price that is the car and each price if i do that you see that I have the make so Audi. Uh, Audi is costing uh, twenty three thousand eight hundred and seventy four, uh, seventy five, right? So that price is greater than twenty. That's why I selected it, right? And then I have BMW, which cost um twenty thousand nine hundred and seventy, all right? Then I have twenty one thousand one hundred and um five, right? So you can see BMW coming up like that. So BMW prices are high. I mean, and um you can see Audi is very high over here. And then you can see followed by Jaguar, right, 32,250. So all these prices are greater than um, 20,000. All these prices are greater than 20,000. That's what my condition is. I want to see the cars that are priced above 20,000. Okay. I can also see this, right, um, all the Volvo cars. So specifically, you can do it for a particular car, right? So all the Volvo cars that are priced less than 50,000, right? So let's see how we're going to do that query. Okay, 
so now all the Volvo cars right that are priced less than fifty thousand right so what I'm going to do is that I go into my data right then I select um, Volvo right so in my data if they if, if I mean I go into the make column right so if the make um, data over there is equivalent right if the make data over there is equivalent to Volvo right and the price right that's what I'm using over here this actually um, represent end right so and the price so I select the price and the price is less than 50,000 that's what my condition actually is giving me here all the Volvo cars that are priced less than 50,000 so the first thing I need to do is to locate all the Volvo cars okay and then also specify that their price is supposed to be 50 uh, less than 50,000 right so if I do that right you can see that I have this I have all the Volvo cars right I have the make here now let's go and see the prices of these right the prices of them are this 12,940 13,415 so all these are cars that are priced um, below 50,000 right all these are the OD cars I mean the Volvo cars right the Volvo cars that are priced below 50,000 okay so with this this command can actually um, help you to do that okay now let's say uh, we want to select only the make and then the price remember that now we have everything together although we've been able to select all the Volvo cars right all the Volvo cars that um that are having price less than 50,000 but we have all the other columns also there so maybe we are only interested in the make and then the price right and then the price so that we can actually compare and then see so for that I, I think I showed you a trick that you can actually use use to do that okay now in this case I'm going to show you another way I go into the data right I go into the data then in the data I go into the make column then I check for all the Volvo cars right so if the, the particular data in the um, in the make column is equivalent to Volvo cars and also the price is less than 50,000 all right so from here right from here all the way to here is the same thing that we did over here is the same code nothing changes whatever is going to change is here right that in this case i just want the make and then the price so what do i add i add this one at the end of it right that print only the make and then the price remember that this is um i have two items in here so i need to actually bring two um two square bracket here right otherwise if it is one item then i would have just used one one square bracket okay so i'm only interested in the make and then the price and not everything as this one was displaying for us okay so if i do that you see that i have only the make and then the price so this is just i mean all the Volvo cars that are priced less than um 15 uh, 50 000 all right it's all of them over here